Hey, Fanny, can you hear me? Okay, I think we're live. Let me go back to Zoom. Okay. Hey, everyone. Good morning. Can you hear me all right before we get started? Okay. All right, guys. Um, we're here live in the Business Analyst in Demand Facebook group. I am Sarjeet. You're either watching this in the Facebook group or on YouTube. What I typically do is any live training session that I do in this group, Business Analyst in Demand Facebook group, I put it typically on YouTube just so that it's easy for you guys to find. Uh, the YouTube channel is also Business Analyst in Demand. Um, again, this is live training. So if you have any questions, please let me know. If you're watching me live on Facebook, I don't have the ability to see your comments. So if you have questions and you're leaving them in the Facebook group, I will get to your comments later. If you wanna join me live um, on Zoom, the link is in the events area in the Facebook um, page, uh, Business Analyst and Demand a Facebook group. So if you go into the events area, you'll see this event that's happening right now. Uh, find the link and join me live, okay? And uh, again, if you're watching this on a replay or on YouTube and have questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll, I'll make sure that I um, respond to your questions. So uh, last week we started to talk about Agile, right? And my uh, departing thought or my message was that you guys, uh, even when you're doing Agile methodology, you are still implementing IT products or systems which means that there's a structured approach on how IT projects are built, right? Or are implemented and then rolled out. Um, I grew up with Waterfall. So a lot of my training um, correlates Waterfall with Agile. And I understand Agile is the new, you know, buzzword. And it actually is a good methodology to develop software and products with. So um, I've used it. I've used both of them. I do like Agile. But a lot agile can be a little complicated to understand just because the framework is like um, not set in stone. So for that reason, if you don't have any experience in implementing software solutions and you're starting out um, in learning agile, it may be a little difficult for you to understand, right? Understanding just all the buzzwords like the ceremonies such as the daily scrum and the retrospective, just reading about them will not give you an, like a good understanding of how they work, right? So I've recommended in my past training that you go back and you wa understand Waterfall, which is has um, a structured approach on how you implement projects because it's linear, right? You do planning, you do analysis, um, you uh, do validation, you do um, development work. So it's because it's linear, it, there's, um, you know, you have a better and a firm understanding of how um, IT systems and products are built. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, perfect. Um, so after we, so today's topic, what I want to focus on today is the product backlog. Okay. So typically, and again, as I mentioned before, I will go back and relate everything to waterfall, right? Because that's how I understand agile. And if, if you have waterfall experience, that's great. If you have working, um, agile experience, that great, that's great. But if you don't understand waterfall, it'll help you understand agile much, much better. Okay. So today's topic is the product backlog. So what is the product backlog, right? So the product, so if you are, um, in the waterfall, um, arena, what you call analysis, right? So typically projects um, in the waterfall environment are six to 18 months and some are much, much longer, right? Depending on what you're building. But if you're having a product that's, um, or a project that's six to 18 months, you're typically spending two to three months just in analysis phase, right? Just to document requirements, just to talk to everybody 
under the sun that's impacted by that project to understand what requirements we need to document and what the product um, needs to deliver, right? Now, if you are in the agile environment, you are not spending two to three months just understanding the requirements, right? In the agile environment, that you're looking at two things. You're looking at the minimal viable product, the MVP, which is the bare minimum that we as a team or a product team needs to have for us to release to market, right? The whole goal of Agile is speed to market, which means that you're releasing limited functionality, right? Either for funding purposes or either just to get into the market and you know, compare to the competition that's in the market. So you're looking at two things when we're looking at the product backlog. You're not trying to um, understand the full scope of the project. It is good that you know to have an understanding of that. But and when you're you know starting out an agile project, you're concerned primarily with the MVP, which is a minimal viable product. And then you're also trying to understand, you know, what other features you need to build out. So that becomes your product backlog. Okay. So the goal of, and there's a few roles in Agile, there's a product owner. This is a person that is the most closest to the business. They may or may not be technical in nature, but they understand what the product is. They own the product, right? They're probably responsible for um, making sure this product is successful, right? So this is a person who has deep business um, acumen, business knowledge, and can give you direction on if anything is doable or not from a business standpoint, right? Not a technical standpoint, but from a business standpoint. So then you have your Scrum Master. Scrum Master, so in the traditional um, BA PM role, the Scrum Master kind of combines your PM role as well as a BA role, right? Because the role of a business analyst is um, not primarily to document business requirements. The goal of a business analyst, um, or actually uh, the goal of a Scrum Master is to help the product owner document user stories if the product owner needs help. The role of a scrum master is also to make sure, you know, working with team members and making sure that there's no impediments, right? Meaning that there's no roadblocks that our developers are facing. There's no roadblocks that our QA folks are facing. There's no roadblocks that our, even our product owner is facing, right? So lots of times scrum masters spend a lot of time with product owners just to help them understand how Agile works, how user stories, proper user stories are written. And even when the product owner talks to the stakeholders, sometimes from masters um, you know, attend and help them make sure that we're gathering enough detail in the requirements on what is needed to be built out technology-wise. Okay, does that make sense you guys? Any questions so far? Okay, so now going back to the product backlog, which is the topic for today, is once you have identified your product owner, typically the project doesn't start until you have a product owner, typically, I'm talking about the textbook, typically, but in many situations, sometimes you won't have a product owner assigned until the team is formulated. They'll select somebody to own the product, then at that point, you as a team, the product owner, scrum master, and the project team, which include developers and um, testers and, you know, um, uh, designers, UX designers, right? We as a team define the MVP because the product owner will say, okay, if we're going to launch this product to the market, this is what we need to launch with. This is the bare minimum. If we don't have this, we don't have the product typically. So the, let's, say, let's say they define 10 things from the product backlog. So everything at a high level that we need to deliver goes on the product backlog. We define 10 features that need to be implemented um, for us to go live, which is our MVP. And once we have our MVP, that's how we start to schedule our uh, sprints. I'm having, I'm hearing some background noise. Um, 
If you have questions, please let me know. Otherwise, uh, please put yourself on mute. Okay, perfect. And again, you guys, this um, replay will be available on Facebook as well as YouTube for you guys to watch. Um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so uh, going back to what I was saying, um, all high level features of your product go onto the product backlog. Um, things that we're gonna deliver in the MVP go, you know, are identified as high priority. And then we start to schedule our sprint releases based on high priority items. So now um, six months down the road, let's say our MVP is delivered and out the door. Now we go back to the product backlog. So every time a sprint is done, so a sprint um, is a release, uh, typically two to four weeks um, of, uh, of delivering workable functionality, right? So two to four weeks, we deliver small bits and pieces of functionality and that, you know, a release can include two to three sprints or more, right? Because when you're releasing product to the market, to your customers, to your stakeholders, you want to make sure it's substantial, not like a huge functionality, but let's say, you know, you're, you're releasing two to three features at a time. So now let's say our minimal viable product is released. We are now, we go back after every sprint, we go back to the product backlog as a team, we prioritize on what the next features will be. We add them into the next sprint based on prioritization from the product owner, from the project team, because um, lots of times people are like, why, why do developers, um, are, why are they involved in the prioritization? And they're involved from a sizing and impact analysis. So sometimes, um, some features may be really big or complicated. So we do need to break them up into smaller features, um, into smaller user stories. Um, and for that purpose, um, we need our development folks to kind of weigh in and say, okay, um, if we were to uh, you know, bring in this user story in this sprint, um, it would make sense for us to do something else uh, at the same time, because we're touching the same code, right? So from that standpoint, it's helpful to have your technical staff there, your developers, you know, your QA folks, because they can give you input on what things, what like things can be grouped and implemented and out the door. Okay. So I think that's all for today. I hope you um, uh, enjoyed this um, discussion on the product backlog. Please let me know if you have questions in the comments. We will have um, weekly training sessions in this group. Um, and again, this is your opportunity to attend live and ask me questions um, live. Okay, sounds good. All right, guys, I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.